In this video, we're going to be talking about the first derivative test. So if you recall, in the previous video, we sort of talked about what extreme values are, where, and the key idea that they occur where f to the first derivative is equal to zero, right? So, however, we wanted to we wanted to find a way to prove which specific critical points are actually extreme values, and to do that, the first derivative test is one of our go-to methods. So let's consider this graph here, and before we even do anything, let's quickly establish where our, our extreme values are. So we have one over here for sure, right? And we have one down here. So again, this is going to be my, um, this is going to be a max, and that's going to be a min, right? And we've also established that at both of these points, we have a flat tangent line, right? In other words, the first derivative is equal to zero. Right. Now here's my challenge to you. My challenge to you. I want you to look at points around both these, both these uh, extreme values, and I want you to tell me what you notice about the first derivative. What's happening to it around these two points? Not specifically at those points because we we know it's zero there. But what's happening to it around the max? and what's happening to it around the min. Take a second to think about that. All right, so hopefully you've had a chance to think about that. Let's, let's go through it now. So let's look at some points um, to the left of this maximum here. Well, if we drew our tangent lines, we'd see that our function is, is increasing, right? Whoops. So if we drew our tangent lines right around here, see that we're sort of increasing here. So we can say that our first derivative is gonna be, we can say that our first derivative is greater than zero. Over here, right? But now what's happening to the right of that maximum? So to the left, it's increasing for sure. But what's happening to the right? Well. If we look down here, suddenly now, we're decreasing. Or the slope of my tangent line is now negative. So my first derivative is now less than zero. Okay. Now let's look at the minimum. Right? So what's happening to the left for the of what's happening to the left of this minimum here well I'm still decreasing right as shown above I'm still decreasing and so my first derivative is still less than zero it's a little cramped there but you get the idea still less than zero but now immediately after I've gone through the minimum look what's happening the slope of my tangent line has now flipped signs again. So we're increasing again. Or f prime of x is now greater than zero. It's pretty cool. Yeah. So that's basically what's happening here. Notice how the first derivative is switching signs here. Like we're going from increasing to decreasing around the maximum and decreasing to increasing on the minimum. So basically, we're taking it with this particular with this specific test, we're taking advantage of how extreme values tend to occur on these sort of hills. We're taking advantage of that fact and the fact that we can analyze the first derivative to tell us for sure that we have a maximum or a minimum, right? So, let's let's dissect this thing. All right, so let's uh, put this all together now. So, if f prime of x switches signs at x equals, at some, let's see be some critical point. And if f prime of x switches signs there, we have an x, we know for a fact that we'll have an extreme value, right? And let's think about why this would work even in the situation where we have the x cubed function, right? So if we look back here, right, at our, our friend, the x cubed function, mm -hmm. notice that this function is increasing everywhere except at this critical point here. So if we were to go ahead and draw some tangent lines, 
it's increasing here, right? It's zero over there, but it continues to increase after. So this actually fails this test because it does not switch signs. So in this specific case, we have no uh, extreme value, right? So that's why this test even works in the situation where we have this. This test serves to eliminate things like this x cubed, which have a critical point, but it tells us very clear that but have a, with, which have a critical point, but no extreme value. So this test works in eliminating that. So that's very good for us, right? So let's let's look at some more now. So the first, if f prime of x switches signs from positive to negative, remember that means we're going like this and then like this, we have a max. Right? Now f prime of x switches from negative to positive, remember we're going down like this, we have a min. Right? And once again, we're taking advantage of this very, like, hill-like behavior of, extre of, um, these, extre of these uh, extreme values. So the fact that they look something like this, that allows us to, or even if we consider an absolute value function, which looks something like this, first of would be undefined up there. But essentially what we're doing is we're taking advantage of the fact that they establish this sort of behavior where they go up and then down. And we're taking advantage of that in each of these cases to really, um, give us information of that, right? So that's how this test works. All right, so let's do a quick example just so we can really knock this on the head, right? So we wanna find and verify all extreme values for this polynomial here, right? So the first logical step, right, is we wanna find, we wanna find f prime, we wanna find our critical points, sorry. Right, we wanna find those critical points and use that information to, um, to go we want to find our critical points. Remember, the reason that we, this is a logical step to start at, is because our extreme values can only occur at critical points. So that helps us get a good uh, place to start, right? So we want to take f prime of x, and we want to set that equal to zero. So f prime of x in this case is just, it's a power rule there. So that's going to be 6x minus one. If you don't remember how to do the power rule, by the way, I have a whole nother video on that, so make sure you check that out. Uh, 6x minus one, that's gonna be equal to zero, right? So then, if I solve this equation, I'm gonna get, um, if I add the one over to that side, divide by six, I get that x is just gonna be one sixth. That's gonna be my critical point. The next thing I can do is I can start employing my first derivative test. Right. Start employing this. And basically what I'm actually gonna do for this is I'm gonna use a number line. You might remember this idea from the previous curve sketching video where we use this number line to we use this number line to test for inc intervals of increasing or decreasing. It's actually the exact same number line that we're going to use here, except we're going to take that first derivative information, and instead of using it just for increasing or decreasing, we're actually going to use it to find, to test if that's an extreme value or not, right? So we're going to do the same thing, and if you want more intricacies, I'd recommend you review that video. So we're going to take the first derivative. We're going to have the first derivative. We're gonna have that point x equals one sixth out here. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna test a point on each of these intervals, right? And see what the sign of the first derivative is there. Right? So over here, right, over here we have let's test maybe zero. That's a nice point to the left of this. F prime of zero is uh, six times zero minus one is minus one. Again, I don't even really care that it's minus one, I just care that it's a negative number, right? What about a number to the right? Well, I like one. So f prime of one equals, that's six times one minus one is just gonna be five. Again, I only really care that it's a positive number. So that's what I've got. So what conclusion can we take from this now? Well, 
if you forgot, if you kind of forgot exactly what this is, I would I like to draw this kind of these kind of arrows here, right? So it's decreasing, I draw an arrow like that, and then it's increasing, I draw an arrow like that, and that should make it very apparent to you that this is going to be a minimum, right? This is going to be a minimum. So let's write that. Let's write out our conclusion. So since f prime of x switches signs from increasing to from positive to negative sorry from negative to positive my my apologies at x equals one sixth we can conclude that we have a minimum at x equal to one sixth. And that's your final answer. Now you don't have to write, maybe don't have to write this out every time unless your, your specific class requires you to, but you, you should understand this thought process that we go through, right? So we find critical points to find the only points where our extreme values could occur. And then we take advantage of the first derivative test, right? Which allows us to, which allows us to make this conclusion and, that we, and then we test the sign of the first derivative around the point to, to drive that home. If you found this video helpful, please do like, share, subscribe, leave a comment and check out some other videos. See you next time.